Hello and welcome back. So today I'm building the 124th scale Audi A4 Quattro BTCC car from Nunu BMAX, whatever they're calling themselves. So this kit was fairly recently released and I'm a big fan of the uh, super touring era of the British touring cars from the 1990s. So I was keen to get a hold of one of these. So there's not much body prep that needs to be done. There's a couple of uh, sort of support bars in between the uh, front and rear windscreen areas. So just uh, sanding those down once I've snipped them off. Then there's a mold seam on the front bumper. But apart from that, they have handily run them along some of the panel lines, like along the bonnet and the roof. I'm detacking the body here with this uh, anti-static brush. Then I'm giving it uh, a couple of coats of uh, Tamiya light grey fine primer in a spray can. Then I'm painting it in X11 chrome silver from Tamiya. This has been thinned down uh, about half and half with some X20A. We'll say there's probably other silvers which would look a little bit better. I think that uh, it's okay though. Uh, here's the decal sheet. Now my major tip for this is to remove the carrier film from the inside of the uh, Audi Rings logo. That's just going to make it more difficult to uh, smooth those areas down when you uh, attach the decals. So that's the first thing I'm doing using a really nice new craft blade. Do be careful when you're doing this, you don't want to accidentally tear any of the decals. So you can see here how it goes over the top of the door handle. You wouldn't want carrier film to go over that. I'm putting down some Mr. Mark setter before applying the decals. Now obviously the downside of not having the carrier film is that now the decals are a little bit uh, harder to position. So this took a little while. But then once they were in place, I put down some Mr. Mark Softer over the top to help them smooth down as best as possible. Now I left some of the carrier film on this back one here as I wanted to make sure I kept that circular shape that went over onto the boot lid. Again, using Mr. Mark Softer to smooth that down to uh, help them adhere as best as possible. Softening solution and then uh, rubbing it into place using this uh, cotton bud is really useful over the uh, sort of ridges on the doors. The decals are really nice quality. They take a little bit longer to uh, come away from the backing paper, but the printing is really nice. I'm attaching these decals before the clear coat, so I need to make sure that they're as smooth as possible. I'm 
Some decals in the kit, such as these Audi Sport UK ones, you're given more than you need, just in case you damage any of them, which is a really helpful inclusion. You can make this kit either the 44 of John Bincliffe or the 45 of Frank Biela. Biela won the championship in 1996, so it seemed a no-brainer that I would go for his car. I really like this signature sort of italicised numbers used by the BTCC. You're also given small black decals for the water jets in the bonnet, which is something I've never seen before. And on the back here, the Quattro and A4 wordings are separate. For some reason, the Four Rings isn't, though. Don't know why. So there we are, all decaled up. Pretty happy with that. I then clear coated it with some Tamiya lacquer clear coat. She gave it a pretty nice finish. And after leaving it to cure for a few days, I then wet sanded it with some Tamiya 3000 grit sanding sponge. And then polished it using some Tamiya polishing compounds. I wasn't fussed about giving this a really glassy finish as uh, race cars don't really look like that but I wanted to remove some of the orange peel it left in the clear coat. I'm using some of their polishing sponges here, uh, which uh, I really like. I wish they were better available. And finishing off with this UMP uh, polishing uh, cloth. All right. Now for the undercarriage, most of it's painted in matte black. And then what with this being the four wheel drive version, you've got the uh, drive train for the front and the rear wheels. Most of this went in with little to no bother whatsoever. Just need to make sure that the exhaust here goes in before the front suspension because otherwise it won't fit. So there you are, put it back over the top. Now I'm using this to me at Weathering Master set just to uh, make it look a little bit used. Mainly using the sort of steel and gunmetal. For the suspension, I painted them silver and then went around the uh, springs using some red Sharpie. Helps to put the uh, sort of hub area in first and then fit the uh, suspension uh, shock absorbers around them like so. I like how these front ones are designed with a kind of T-shape at the top to uh, slot them into place. It has movable steering. As you can see. The poly caps were actually a little bit of a tight fit, so I found I had to sand them in a few places just to uh, kind of get them into the hubs. Having a bit of difficulty here. Then discs go on top of that. They're painted in silver 
and then uh, the centers in gold and the calipers in sort of iron. Used a bit of panel line accent to uh, sort of make them look a bit weathered and pick out the vents. Now this firewall, which goes where the rear seats would have been, is carbon fiber in the real car. So I used some Tamiya carbon fiber sheet, as you can see. Just traced around the outside to get the right shape. And then once it was in place, I doused it with some UMP strong decal solution to help it match up to the pattern. Had some Audi rings on that. And that fits really nicely, just glued on from the back. The interior was all done in silver, same as the bodywork. And then you've got a few interior parts like these buttons and this uh, fire extinguisher. There's also some decals which need to go on at this point as well. The control panel has like an underside and then you put uh, another piece over the top. I painted some sections of the floor in black, such as uh, I think where the battery is. Looked at some interior shots of the car. Then used some Posca paint pens to pick out some buttons on this control panel. I think this is the handbrake and then you've got the gear shifter. Now for this uh, electric box I found I had some of this plastic tubing so I added some of that to the front to make it look like the uh, wires were actually going somewhere. I didn't worry about putting anything on the end as this will all be hidden under the dashboard. You've got a rear central light and a little red decal to go on top of that. Pedals were done in gunmetal. And the seat is in satin black with some uh, sand yellow on the back. Now I didn't like the look of the decals, so instead I got used some of these Eduard photo etch harnesses. These are four point, but they are the correct Sebelt uh, branding. If you want to see how these go together, click the video link above and uh, you can see my tutorial on them. I think they look really good. And uh, even with four point, where the uh, original car had six point, I still think they look a million miles better than the decals. There we are. And there it is in the interior. Now the roll cage is next, but as well, you've got a rear view mirror that goes onto that. So I've used uh, a little bit of aluminium tape to add the mirror effect. Most of the roll cage is in silver with some of the back sections in satin black. Found it needed to be stretched in some places as uh, it had warped slightly. Just hold on and be patient because if you let go of it too early, it will just fall apart. There we are. And then you attach the rear view mirror. Now I found that the Eduard belts didn't quite reach to the back of the roll cage so instead I uh, put them down and uh, attached them to the floor of the car instead. I know that's not 100% realistic but um, uh, you know 
needs must. So there it is with the roll cage attached. And you've got the dashboard here, which was done in black. Vents go underneath that. There's a decal, which goes in the middle. And another one that goes in the middle of the steering wheel. Now I added some carbon fiber to this um, steering wheel section here. And then the screen goes in front of that with a little uh, sort of uh, speedo thing. There's the completed dashboard and the steering wheel. Now this fits uh, within the roll cage, so you can only apply this once the roll cage is in already. I think it's a fairly nicely detailed interior. Got the door cards, which are done in black and silver. I think you could add some carbon fibre to this if you wanted to, but uh, I'm not sure. I think they might have been plastic. To me, a thin is very useful for this kind of job. Then a quick test fit in the chassis. All seems good. Now, one thing that's missing from the instructions is this small little cross piece here. I think that's actually where the seat belts would attach to. Wheels were done in the same silver as the body. Center locking wheel nuts were done in gun metal. And then you've got little OZ decals in the center. Now, when putting on the tires, make sure that the wider part is on the outside. And all four are exactly the same. Comes with a really nice set of window masks which is great. Make sure that you apply these to the front and the back. You can sort of see where they need to go, but uh, they keep their stick, so uh, keep trying until you get the position exactly right, and then smooth them out as best as possible. So these are designed to do the uh, inside uh, sort of black section of the window, but also the rubber trim on the outside. So that's a really, really nice inclusion. You can see how the side windows here don't include uh, stickers for the inside. So make sure that you mask those up yourself, especially if you're using spray cans as you are gonna get a load of uh, overspray. I sprayed some Tamiya Satin Black lacquer paint onto these and uh, gave a pretty nice finish. Just always look really, really carefully to make sure that you've uh, done the coats thick enough as it's sometimes difficult to tell on uh, clear parts. There was a little bit of overspray on the back of one of these, so I cleared it up with a little bit of polishing compound. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I also sprayed the radiator grill here with the same satin black, and then I used this cocktail stick to remove it from the raised areas. Specifically the four circles for the Audi logo and the chrome surround around the outside. I was really pleased with this. Very careful as I didn't want to make any mistakes and find that I had to paint it again. I've forgotten to include it in the video but there is a quattro decal which goes on the radiator so make sure you don't forget that. There's a small bit of mesh which goes at the front and also there's black uh, which needs to go around the bottom of the car cutting this out you need to make sure that the shape is really really accurate as uh, the uh, space to glue it on isn't very wide I'm using a little bit of foam safe super glue just to attach that try not to let it stick out as you will be putting a part underneath it later there we are and then there's some more black vent parts which go above that
There we are. Now there's also this little tow hook. There'll be another one at the back later on. I've used a bit of orange Sharpie to do the inside of these indicators and then just a little bit of glue around the edge and they fit really, really nice. Same with the rear ones, although these ones don't need coloring at all. All the color will be on the lenses. Now I forgot that you need to drill a hole in the roof for the aerial. I want to be really, really careful of this so I don't want to damage the paintwork. I should really have done it before. Now then the rear bumper needs black around the bottom so I very carefully mask that. Don't want to damage any of the decals although they have been clear coated over the top. And there it is with the satin black trim. You've got some more ventilation bits which go at the front around the sort of uh, lip of the car. Make sure you put these ones on first. And then the uh, vented slots go either side of those. There are also some Bosch decals which need to go on there. You could do these before attaching, but I would suggest waiting. Got a radiator which goes in here at the front. Don't forget that. Using a little bit of foam safe super glue for the uh, headlight lenses. I added a little bit of black Sharpie around the outside of these to simulate the rubber trim. I think it makes it just look that little bit more realistic. These fit really nicely. Masked off a small square on the back for the reversing lights. These have got orange at the top and the rest is uh, clear red. Now the instructions suggest this goes in from the outside but the front window really needs to go in from underneath. So make sure you attach all the windows before fitting the body to the rest of the car. I found the rear window was the worst fitting, so you might want to sand around the outside. I also found that you needed to paint the inside of the bottom of the window in black, as otherwise you'll see the silver and red through the inside of the window and it will uh, kind of not look very good. I just used a small amount of foam safe super glue behind the B pillar. Now I then attached the body to the chassis. It's quite simple, clips at the front and the back which means no glue is required. Which is just as well as I found that the instructions are wrong and you can't actually put the wheels on once the body is on because the wheels are too big for the car. So you have to put the wheels on at this point and then put the body on. Also be very careful when attaching the rear bumper. You don't want to let any glue leak around and uh, ruin the paintwork. I use some super glue from the inside to attach that. There we have it, it's nearly finished. So then you've got this front uh, sort of lip thing here. That's all painted satin black. Now I should really have attached these wipers earlier when I did the windscreen so uh, make sure you do that then. There's also a couple of little switches which go above the uh, extinguisher and electrical cutoff signs. Good idea to attach those earlier as well. Wing mirrors are different depending on which car you're building. Then you've got the uh, Quattro Sunstrip along the top. Binkliff's one is white and Biela's is yellow. Rear spoiler is silver with a bit of black decal around the back. And there we have it, nearly finished. 
Just a few more things. So firstly, you need the names on the side and rear windows, and also the Auto Trader logos, which go on the front headlights. This really brings me back fond memories of playing Toka Touring Cars on the PS1. There's the Bosch logos around the front, and Biela's name on the side windows. And there we have it. So time for some final pictures and the Bob score. For value, I'm gonna give this a three out of five. It's quite expensive in Europe. For assembly, it's a three out of five. There's a few mistakes in the instructions, which hopefully they will iron out. For accuracy, four out of five, no engine, but very good detail on this car. For quality, it's a very well-designed kit with excellent decals, so it's a four out of five. It's getting a 4 out of 5 for Legacy for its domination in various different touring car championships. Bringing it up to a total of 18 out of 25, this is a pretty solid kit and definitely one to get for any fans of either Audi or particularly touring cars in the mid-90s. What do you think from what you've seen? Have you got one of these yourself? Are you going to build it or have you built it already? What about the other touring cars from Nunu that are out there? Personally, I'm really looking forward to getting the Volvo at some point, also the Alfa Romeo, which is upcoming, and the Rover SD1. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a comment down below, share, subscribe, like, all of that stuff. Thanks a lot for watching.